Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, we will learn everything about event listeners in JavaScript. You must be wondering that what is new in event listeners, the page, but I guarantee you there is something in the video which you might don't know and can help you in your JavaScript interviews. So stick around and don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys, so if you are a student or a working professional who is looking for a great career in software development, then you have to think about the aspects like what's trending in the industry or the kind of questions being asked in the interviews. What's the thought process behind the architecture of a great applications like Google, Amazon, Zomato and Ola or how to improve your code chef ranking. So an academy is providing a platform where you can have access to the weekly shows which you can watch live and the host of these shows are working with some of the top companies like Google, Amazon to name a few. They are seven star coders on CodeChef and are industry experts with their years of experience. They will walk you through their own industry experience and interact with a lot of guests like HR and industry leaders of the top companies where they will ask questions raised by you. In the live episodes, you get an opportunity to ask tech HRs about the top 20 interview questions and the industry leaders directly about their recruitment process in startups and MNCs. What's the eligibility and how to apply and how they build such great products. Not limited to this, you can even get your resume and your college or a personal projects improved by getting them reviewed by the experts, software development engineers. Not only this, you can participate in the mock interviews and learn courses on programming languages, cloud computing, blockchain and crypto, tech aspects of digital marketing, data analytics. And if you have ever thought about how these frontline apps like Zomato, Paytm, GPay, Amazon, Flipkart, Tracto were made in the first place. What was their thought process? So then there is a show to answer all your questions. And in that show, Anuj will discuss about the architecture breakdown of the popular apps. Learners will get to see how these apps are made and how these apps work. And you can get your daily dose of learning and many such shows at one price, rupees triple nine per year. And if you use my code, the page zero one, then you will get a 10% discount and get the subscription at 899 per year only. You will find all the links related to the Earn Academy platform in the description below along with the discount code that you can use for subscription. All right guys, so I already have some of the boilerplate code and let me give you a quick walkthrough of it. So for the HTML, I have a div with a class of first and box to it. Inside that I have an another div with a class of second and box. And inside that I have an input tag with the type of button and a value of click me. And it also has the class as third and box. And for our CSS, I have added some of the basic CSS so that our box looks a little bit nice. And I have also added the script file, which is the event.js where we are going to write our JavaScript code. So in the event.js, I have already taken the references of my HTML elements. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to start with the very basic by adding an event listener to our first box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write an first dot event listener. And we know that the event listener takes couple of arguments. So we will start with the very basic two arguments. The first argument, which will be our event. So in this case, we are having a click event. And the second argument will be a function. It can be an arrow function or it can be a callback. I'm going to use an arrow function. So if you don't know about arrow function, I have a complete video on it. You can click on the card above or find the link in the description. So we have an event and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a console log of the event. And now if I click on my first box, you will see that we get a console of the event. And this event object contains all the information related to the event listener. But what we are interested in, we are interested in the target property. And this target property is actually going to give us the information about the element which we have added the click listener. And you will find all the information inside this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do an event dot target. And if I save it and if we click on the box one, then we are actually going to get the element itself on which we have added the event listener. 
we can actually add more than one event listener uh, on the same element. So if we want to check it, then I'm just going to do a copy paste. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save it. And if I click on it, then you will see that I get two console logs. So we can add both the event listeners and the execution of these event listeners happens in the sequence they are written. So it, the first event listener will be printed and then the second event listener will be printed. Next thing I want to show you is let me change this first to first box and I will change this as well to first box. And you will notice that when I actually click on the first box, I get the first box as console. But if I click on the second box, I still get the first box. And if I do so for the third box, I still get the first box. And why it is so? Why is this happening? So to understand this, what we will do, we are going to add an event listener to all the boxes. So I'm going to add an event listener to here. And I'm also going to add the event listener to our third. All right. So if I click on the first box, you will see that the first box is printed. But if I click on the second box, you will notice that a second box is printed, but then we also have a first box. And if I click on the third box, then it's going to print the third box, then the second box, and then the first box. And this is because that our third box is inside the second box and the second box is inside the first box. So all the event listeners are called. And even if we have an event listener on the document itself, then that event listener will also be have executed. So if I add an event listener here, so I'm going to change this to document and I'm going to add a document here. All right. And now if I click on the third box again, you will see that I have a third box, second box, first box and the document box itself. And this is called event bubbling. And this is just a one phase of the events in JavaScript. Let me show you this more better with some slides. All right. So this is the HTML that we are working on. And so what I have done is I have created the boxes uh, in the hierarchy. So we have at the top level element as a window. Then we have the document. Then we have the first, second, third and the button. And when we actually click on the button, the event actually propagates from button to third, third to second box, second box to first box. Eventually it goes to the top level element of the document. And this phase is called event bubbling. So this is the only one phase of the event listener. But actually we have two phases of the event listener. The first phase is the event bubbling, which is by default. Whenever we add an event listener, the event listener is by default is in the bubbling phase. But the second phase is the event capturing, which starts from the top level of the document and it propagates to the element where the event listener is fired. So this event is called the event capturing starts from the window and it will go down till the button or the element where the event is fired. So we can see both these phases with, with the coding example. So let's go back in the Visual Studio code and let's see both the events. So to make our event listener enter into a capturing phase, what we can do is we can actually add a third argument here and the third argument we can add as capture and we will do a capture as true. And by default, the value of the capture is set as false. That is why our events are in always an event bubbling phase. So if I make it at true and if I click on the third box, then you will notice that something strange is happening. And that is because while entering into the event capturing phase, first it starts with the document, but our document doesn't have an event capture as true. So it will go down to the box one and in the box one, it will see that the event capture is true. So that's why the box one is printed and inside the box two, there is no capture as true. So it will go to the box three and inside the box three, there is no capture as true. And from here, the box three will get print because box three is having a event bubbling phase. Then it will go to box two. The first one is not having an event bubbling phase, so it will skip it and then it will go back to the document. And this is what we actually saw in our slides where the event starts from the window and it enters into an event capturing phase and it will go down the line to the element where the event was triggered. And then from there, it will go up back with the event bubbling phase. So that's how the event has two phases. Let's add the event capture to each of the element and let's add the event bubble to each of the element. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add the event capture to each of the element. So let's add it four times. So I'm going to add this for the second 
this will be for the third and this will be for the document all right and let me change this to document again and this will become the third all right and now if i click on the box three then you will see that it starts from the document then it goes to the first box second box and third box so this is the event capturing and once the event capturing is done then it's going to start with the event bubbling so it starts from the third then it goes to the second and for the first one i guess we have only the event capture so that's why we are not able to see it and then the box so this is how the event capturing and event bubbling happens but if you want to stop the event propagation whether it's in the bubbling phase or whether it's in the capturing phase we can actually stop this event propagation by using stop propagation. So if we want to stop the events to get propagated, whether it's in the capturing phase or it's in the bubbling phase, we can use the event stop propagation. And this stop propagation will actually prevent the propagation of the events uh, in the capturing and the bubbling phase. So let's try the event stop propagation. So what I'm going to do, I will go to the first box and inside the first box, I'm going to add the event stop propagation and if I save it then now if I click on the third box you're going to see that it starts from the document so it will go first with the document box and then it will come to the first box but after first box it's not going to go to the second or the third and the event bubbling phase will also not happen because I have stopped my event propagation at the box one itself. So let's remove all this uh, event capturing phase. So now we have understood the event capturing phase. So I'm going to remove it. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add this first here. So this will become first. All right. So when we click on the third box, we see that the event bubbling happens, but we don't want the event to get propagated. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a event dot stop propagation. And now if I click on the third box, only the event listener of the third box will be triggered and all other events will not be triggered. So this is called the stop propagation. The next thing I want to show you is the prevent default. So to demonstrate the prevent default, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change this to a checkbox. All right. And now you will see that if I actually do a checkbox, then the event will be fired and we have done the stop propagation. So that's why it is only showing the third so but if I now do it you will see that the event is getting propagated but we still want the event to be propagated but we want that the default behavior of the checks box should be prevented so for that what we can do I can actually add the event dot prevent default and if I save it then now you will see that if I do a click on a checkbox the events will still be getting propagated but the default behavior of the checkbox which is to get checked will be prevented so if i click on it then the event are still propagating but the checkbox it not checked so this is the basic difference between stop propagation and prevent default another thing we can do with the event listener is that if we want that my event on a element should be triggered only once then we can add a parameter of once as true so i'm going to change this checkbox back to our button all right and now what we want that we want our uh, event listener should be only triggered once so for that like what i can do i can actually write here as once and i can make this once as true and now you will see that if i click on the third box you will see that third box second box first box and document but if i click again then you will see that we have the third box second box and we don't have the first box because we want that this event should be only triggered once this is how you can use the once as a third argument in the event listener and the last thing i want to show you is that if you want that you want to remove your event listener at some particular point of time then you can use the remove event listener let me show you how you can use the remove event listener so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to create a function so i'm going to create a function as display name and this is just going to do a console.log of name all right and now i will use this function inside instead of my arrow function so i'm just going to remove this and i'm going to add my function name all right and now if i click on the box three then you will see that it has third box second box the page and the document 
and I want to remove this event listener after some particular point of time. So what I'm going to do to remove the event listener, I'm just going to do a set timeout and inside the set timeout, it's going to take an arrow function and inside the arrow function, I'm going to use the remove listener. So I'm going to add the first dot remove listener and I want to remove the click event listener and I'm going to give my function name which I want to remove. All right, and this should happen after 3000 milliseconds. All right, now if I save it and if I click it, then you will see that on the first click, I can see all this events. On the second click also, I can see. On the third click also, I can see. On the fourth click, you will see that the event listener is now removed. So this is how you can actually remove the event listener. But while removing the event listener, you have to be careful that if if you have this arrow function, so let me uh, add this arrow function here, copy, and I'm going to add the arrow function here. So I'm going to add the arrow function here and I will change this to first box. And if I click it, then I can see the first box again. But if I want to remove it, I cannot use an arrow function here. So if I copy here and if I use the arrow function, then if I click it, you will see that the event listener is still not removed because these two functions are completely different functions in terms of memory references. So you, you need to have a name of your function or you have to use a named function when actually you remove the event listener. So you cannot use an anonymous function while removing the event listener. So that's all I have in this video. I hope this video was helpful and a lot of topics from this video are actually asked in the interview questions like the difference between the stop propagation and prevent default. What is the event capturing? How you can enter to the event capturing phase? And so that's why I wanted to make this video so that you can understand the event listener very clear. So if you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. And you can also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to add the links in the description below. And thank you. Thanks for watching.